Hello and welcome to another edition of the Osteopathic Lyceum podcast. What I want to talk about today, or at least attempt to talk about, is an epistemological issue. And epistemology being essentially the study of what can be known, how it can be known, and who it can be known by, or a theory of truth, or a theory of knowledge, or a theory of knowledge creation. Now, the thing that I want to do is attempt to examine Chapman's reflex points, or at least the claims of Chapman's reflex points, and essentially offer a more simple possible explanation for this, or maybe not even an explanation, something that as not even an edge case essentially makes it really difficult to buy into the Chapman's reflex point claims. So what I'm going to do is share my screen. So for those of you who are only listening, I will do my absolute best to describe this appropriately. I just have to hit a few buttons here. I'm going to move this and resize my window. It's not cooperating the way I would hope, but now it will. Okay, okay. So essentially what I brought up is a is two essentially schematic diagrams, one from uh, a Netter's atlas, which is your dermatomes and myotomes, and one that is a uh, referral pattern on Chapman's reflexes. So if you look at the Chapman's reflexes, essentially all of the points are on the posterior surface of the body. There will be some that will be um, some charts that you'll see that will have anterior points, and they would primarily be through the distribution of the thoracic region or the thoracic cage. Uh, and then you'll see them having having more lateral and anterior points that would uh, correspond with the claimed organs. But if you look at any of these things, the it's a little bit tougher in and around the skull and the head, because basically what you're looking at is a large amount of suboccipital points, right? So for the ears and the eyes and whatnot, uh, there's going to be at least some referral patterns uh, through the myotome and dermatome that would line up mildly well, especially because of the upper cervical, kind of the C1 through the cervical plexus as it goes up uh, from the back of that and up into the, into the region of the ear and whatnot. So the eyes are a little tougher. But once you get into the posterior points that are going to correspond with the heart, the lung, the liver, the gallbladder, what you are often looking at at that point is essentially a myotomal and a dermatomal distribution from those points. The concept that people would try to lean into is embryologic development and saying, you know, from the, the sclerotome or from the 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 embryological development and how things start and then how they migrate, uh, that and essentially ends up treating, generating your myotomes and dermatomes. So from where things put, start and where they where they move, but then also through development, the general neurological distribution from that embryological development, the claim would be relating back to that that any pain that would be felt along the distribution can then relate to the viscera or to the organ in question. So you're talking about a viscerosomatic expression or a somatovisceral expression. And the manner in which this would be spoken about as far as how you would find it is you would poke the area that would, essentially, the posterior point that would correspond with the outflow or the 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 referral pattern and then what you would do is if there was a provocation of pain you would go to the region that that structure is located and you would put your hand there and then you would generate motion that would create essentially a softening or a relaxation in that region and then you would retest so you'd poke the initial pro provocation point and ideally what would happen is there would be a reduction in provocation of pain insofar as how that works, at least on the posterior side of the body. The posterior side of the body, uh, you've actually got the uh, the sensory coming right off the column. It doesn't go through the an anterior horn. It comes through the, the posterior horn. So that might be a little bit different. Uh, you might have a stronger argument with posterior points as far as referral patterns. That's not necessarily how the spinal cord and referral patterns would be appropriately distributed. As far as neurological synapse, now there may be situations in which it is the case where you do something on the front side, on the sensor, like on the front of the body or the side of the body, uh, and then you get an alteration in 
sensory to the posterior side, it's not impossible. It's just a little bit less likely. So then if it does happen, you can make the argument or you can try to make the argument that there is referral along the neurological pathway. So the organ or the offending region on the anterior surface, which is assumed to be the organ, would then, when softened or shut down, stop sending that signal. The thing that is not being considered is the general change in pressure that would be occurring because of that and how that would then refer through other tissues. So the claim is that it's referring through the organ specifically, but especially if you're in the thoracic region, utilizing the abdominal wall or the ribs as handles to soften a particular region, you can be taking some tension off of the superficial structure, such as the dermatome, just by altering and softening on the front. And then that could be the thing that changes it more than the organ. So instead of continuing to ramble, to try to make this a little bit more concise, you have a dermatomal myotomal pattern that lines up very, very well with the referral pattern because of neurology that is claimed through Chapman's reflex points. Because you're working from the outside of the body, you cannot appropriately examine the, the visceral structures that people are claiming to get reductions in reflex pain. You can't separate that it is the dermatomal or myotomal distribution and not the visceral distribution. The claim is that they kind of come together in a package, so fair enough. However, because there's three things, so the visceral, uh, the visceral neurological distribution and outflow, the myotomal and dermatomal neurological distribution and outflow are essentially along the same lines because of embryology, because there's three to choose from, we have a really hard time claiming that it's any of the three individually and not all three collectively, or the more superficial ones in the myotome and the dermatome as opposed to the viscera. Uh, that being said, viscera tend to have far less sensory output, uh, especially conscious sensory output. Most viscera, their sensory is registered in the brain at relatively unconscious levels and in very, very blunt ways. So obviously you can reach the conscious level, which is why you get some major, major organ pain under certain circumstances and certain pathologies. So it can definitely get to the conscious level. It just operates lower than that or at a unconscious level and a less specific level, which is also why you end up getting referral patterns. So things like a heart attack uh, going down the left arm, much more so in males and things like kidney and gallbladder pain referring through the back and the lumbar region uh, along these myotomal and dermatomal and visceral neurological kind of referral packages. So it can happen. You can definitely get visceral somatic pain. It doesn't necessarily mean that all pain that's noted uh, upon provocation of the vertebral column is visceral pain because you squish the front of the body and get some softening. You can't properly separate that out from the point of observation in the exter external environment that the practitioner is working in to say that it is the organ and it is not the myotome and the dermatome. So a simple myotomal and dermatomal map, I'm going to get rid of this, uh, so a simple myotomal and dermatomal map will give you the opportunity epistemologically or with respect to a theory of knowledge or theory of truth, give you the opportunity to question whether or not what you're identifying is actually an organ referral pattern or if it is some combination that cannot be picked apart of myotomal, dermatomal, and visceral kind of neurological outflow pattern. So to pick it apart is much harder because you could, if you wanted to figure this out, you could have a provoked point on the back of the body or around a spinous process or on one side or the other side. So kind of in the laminar groove, you can provoke pain there and you can try to shut it down by softening something on the posterior side of the body or shut it down on the lateral side of the body and shut it down on the anterior side of the body. If it was the organ and it could only be the organ, then you would have to predict that the provocation, pain provocation on the posterior surface would only go away when the hand was on the anterior surface. It should never go away on the lateral side or on the posterior side. So if you kind of squish the soft tissues on the back, 
uh, and go indirect, make the soft tissue soft, or do that on the lateral side. It should never go away if it's the organ. It should always be on the anterior surface of the body or much closer to the assumed position of the organ. So you could attempt to figure this out with uh, straightforward enough. A straightforward enough experiment that still has high levels of uncertainty on account of the fact that most practitioners are not going to be able to observe an organ appropriately. They're not going to be able to identify exactly where it is or any proper pathology with it, but they can uh, observe what would be considered in a reasonably appropriate way, a package of neurological outflow for the viscera, uh, for the for the myotome and the dermatome. What I would suggest is that the myotome and the dermatome are more parsimonious explanations for the phenomenon of being able to reduce pain provocation results by working somewhere else in the body. Myotomes and dermatomes are more superficial. They have higher degrees of sensitivity throughout, say, the sense or as represented on the, the cerebral surfaces. So it's a little bit more likely, a little bit more parsimonious. It requires less assumptions to suggest that shutting down a, a provoked area of pain by working somewhere in the myotomal and dermatomal distribution is more likely to be the myotome and dermatome changing their sensory environment versus the the visceral structure, which also could be not where you think it is or not have the problem that you think it has. So lots of rambling to basically say, if you compare a myotomal and dermatomal map to a Chapman's reflex map, well, they're more or less the same. The explanation could be sclerotome. The explanation could be embryology, uh, The that they're all the same. And sclerotome and embryology, more or less the same explanation. But if you do that, then epistemolo epistemologically or a theory of knowledge, theory of knowledge creation, theory of truth, what can be known, how can it be known, who can it be known by, you have an epistemological problem that believing in Chapman's reflex points requires that you prove that in any case that you have pain provocation and reduction by working in a distant area along the neurological outflow, you have to prove that it is not a myotome or a dermatome. You have to go through a huge differential process to prove that it's not where the more parsimonious explanation or possible explanation is that you're simply altering the sensory information along the myotome and the dermatome because they're more superficial and better represented at the conscious level, especially with respect to pain provocation on the posterior surface of the body. So a little bit of rambling, a little bit of repetition to say we have an epistemological problem that is very, very superficial with the claims of anything with respect to Chapman's reflex that is e more easily explained superficially without digging into research because I didn't dig into research. I didn't go and look at these referral pain patterns and the base of knowledge. But from a scientific perspective, from a hypothesis generation perspective, the more parsimonious hypothesis is, uh, is myotome and dermatome because they are more sensitive and they are more superficial, especially with respect to working the exter external surface of the body. If you really wanted to get fancy, you could set up conditions whereby you assess the myotome, you assess the dermatome, you can figure that out and rule out through advanced diagnostic methods, which cost a lot of money, rule out any visceral pathology. So you could do that. Uh, to really kind of get nitty gritty. I think most people in the osteopathic sphere, you're either unwilling or don't have the funding to do that. So you could set up a more superficial experiment and say that if it is an organ, you pr provoke pain on the posterior surface, on the appropriate side, you go to that side, you go to the anterior surface. If it's the organ, you would then want to, ex to suspect that that is the only thing that should shut down that pain provocation because if you get it on the lateral side or you get it on the posterior side, and then it the organ is a less parsimonious explanation of the phenomenon. So if you get reduction in pain provocation at all points on the anterior surface, on the lateral surface, and on the posterior surface, then the more appropriate explanation immediately has to become, but is not necessarily perfectly proven, that it's the myotome and the dermatome. The more parsimonious explanation, if you can re reduce pain provocation on the posterior surface, especially at the laminar groove region, if you can get it to happen on the anterior surface, the lateral surface, and the posterior surface, then you need to abandon the organ immediately as the most parsimonious explanation. You need to go to the myotome and the dermatome as the more parsimonious 
explanation and parsimony, as I already noted, is the thing that explains the most with the least amount of assumptions. What I would generally say is that using an organ for explanation of referral patterns is less parsimonious. There's more assumptions than explaining with myotome and dermatome. So uh, again, just to highlight a superficial epistemological problem or a superficial knowledge or claim problem, we use the comparison of the Chapman's reflex points, myotomes and dermatomes, which could collectively then be called sclerotomes or the neurological outflow from an embryological origin. So there you go. Hopefully that was useful. Uh, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon.